All right, so strap yourselves in, because this deep dive is going to be a wild one. We're tackling a cosmic heavyweight this time, a being who eats universes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You think anyone out there is hungry enough for seconds after that kind of meal? Huh. Good point. Although with this guy, you never know. I'm talking about the one and only Galactus, the devourer of worlds. He's definitely a fascinating case study. We're going way beyond your typical comic book villain with this one. He's in a whole other league. Absolutely. When I think of villains, it's all about power grabs and, you know, just generally being evil for the sake of it. But with Galactus, this stack of comics and articles you sent me paints a much um, more complex picture, wouldn't you say? Definitely not your run-of-the-mill bad guy. The thing about Galactus is... He needs to consume planets to actually survive. It's a basic need, like breathing is for us, a primal hunger that he can't just ignore. And that's where things get really interesting. So wiping out entire civilizations just because, well, he's got to eat, that's pretty rough. But you're right. It kind of makes you rethink the whole good versus evil thing, especially on a cosmic level. It really throws a wrench in the works, doesn't it? To really wrap our heads around it, we need to go back to the very beginning, to the origin of Galactus where it all began. Let's do it. Unpack that origin story for us. I got to say, those pictures of him, you know, the giant metallic dude, not exactly someone you'd miss in a crowd. Appearances can be deceiving. He wasn't always the uh, imposing figure we see today. Before Galactus, there was Galen, an explorer from a planet called Tah, billions of years ago. Just picture it. A dying universe on the verge of collapse. Hold on. Back up a second. Billions of years. Are we talking even before the Big Bang here? Exactly. See, Galen's universe was on its last legs. He and a handful of survivors were desperately trying to, you know, escape their fate. What happened next is pure cosmic legend. Imagine their ship swallowed whole by this collapsing reality, like a reverse Big Bang. But here's the thing. Galen, he didn't just die. He merged with the sentience of that dying universe. Whoa, he merged with the sentience of the universe. So it's not just survival. It's like he absorbed the essence of a whole universe. Okay, that's just wild. Hmm. But how does something like that even happen? Think of it less like a physical merging and more like a fusion of energy and consciousness. In the comics, they describe it as Galen becoming one with the very fabric of his universe. That is pretty heavy stuff. It is, but that's the kind of scale we're dealing with when we talk about Galactus. It's cosmic. All right, so this Galen, who's basically become one with the universe, that's how he becomes Galactus. Yes. But there's another piece to this puzzle, one that makes it even more interesting. Get this. This whole cosmic rebirth, the birth of Galactus, it was witnessed by someone else. The Watcher. Wait, the Watchers. They're like the cosmic observers, right? Yeah. The ones who see everything but don't get involved. You got it. And this particular watcher, witnessing Galactus's birth, he knew what this would mean, what Galactus would become, and he chose not to interfere. That's a big deal, right? Considering these guys are all about observing, never interfering, even when the fate of the universe is at stake. Huge. It tells you that this watcher, he understood that Galactus, his existence, even as a planet eater, it had to happen. It served some greater purpose. So, right from the get-go, Galactus is tied to forces beyond our understanding, forces even he might not fully grasp. It's mind-boggling when you think about it. Exactly. Imagine. The universe as we know it, it was born after Galan transformed into Galactus. His memories of being Galan, his life before, gone, replaced by this overwhelming hunger, this cosmic need to consume energy on a scale we can't even comprehend. So that's how the Devourer of Worlds was born. It's kind of sad when you think about it. Tragic, yeah, but maybe, just maybe, necessary. Because now you have this being, Galactus, with mastery over matter and energy on a level few can even grasp. I mean, we're talking telepathy, telekinesis. He can manipulate matter itself, change his size at will. He sounds unstoppable. He pretty much is. We're talking about a being of unimaginable power. Okay, yeah. It's a whole other level of cosmic power. Yeah. You Give me an example. What's the most extreme display of power you came across in all those comics? There's one instance, right, where he just casually obliterates multiple solar systems. Whoa. Like, gone. Gone. Not just planets. Entire solar systems wiped out. Poof. Erased. And for what? He needed a snack. Talk about a cosmic case of the munchies. Right. That's Galactus for you. It really highlights the sheer scale we're dealing with. His hunger isn't just an appetite, it's a force of nature, a force that's been around since the dawn of our universe, shaping it in ways we can't even begin to imagine. So we're talking about a being who could munch on entire galaxies if he's feeling peckish. It's tough to see the upside when you put it like that, even if it's just, like you said, a primal urge. 
where does all that destruction fit into the bigger picture? I get it. It's easy to see him as this, well, engine of destruction. But here's the thing, and this is where it gets really interesting. Even Galactus's hunger, the very thing that makes him seem so destructive, it's also connected to creation. It's like a like a cosmic cycle, you know. A cycle. What do you mean by that? Think of it this way. The void he leaves behind, where those planets used to be, it doesn't stay empty forever. That space, it allows for new stars to form, new systems to be born. You could almost compare it to a like a cosmic forest fire. It might seem destructive at first, but it clears out the old growth, making way for something new. Okay, I think I see what you're saying. So it's destruction on a massive scale. Yeah. Yeah. But it also fuels creation in the grand scheme of things. Bingo. It's this balance, this incredible interplay between destruction and creation that makes his role in the universe so complex, so fascinating. He can't be easily categorized as simply good or evil. Right. Makes you think twice about labeling anything in such black and white terms. Mm -hmm. And speaking of complex roles, Galactus doesn't exactly travel the cosmos alone, does he? We have to talk about the Heralds. Ah, uh, yes. The Heralds. It's like they're honorary members of the Clean Plate Club. Huh. That's one way to put it. <laughs> but seriously, they're the ones who get the uh, privilege of finding Galactus's next meal, right? Essentially, they're granted a portion of Galactus's own power cosmic. Okay, so they're super-powered scouts searching for the cosmic buffet table. But you can't talk about the Heralds without mentioning the big guy, the Silver Surfer. It's like he and Galactus are joined at the hip. He's probably the most well-known Herald, and for good reason, the Surfer's story. Man, it's full of death, full of tragedy. He started out as Norin Rad, an astronomer from, get this, the planet Zenla, and he only agreed to become a herald to save his own planet from being devoured. Wow. Talk about a rock and a hard place. To save your world, you have to lead a cosmic being to countless others for. Mm. You know, talk about a sacrifice. It's a huge burden, and it weighs on him. That's what makes the surfer such a tragic figure. He sees firsthand the devastation Galactus causes, and it tears him apart inside. Yeah, it's that internal conflict that makes him so compelling, so relatable. He doesn't want to be the instrument of destruction, but what choice did he have, right? Right, and eventually that internal struggle leads him to rebel against Galactus, to choose to protect life instead of serving it up as the next course. Now, that's a hero's journey, if I've ever heard one. Yeah. But it seems like the surfer isn't the only one who's wrestled with the whole serving Galactus thing. There were others, right? Oh, yeah, plenty of others. You've got Fire Lord, who used to be from the planet Xandar, he actually became a herald to get back at Galactus for, well, you can probably guess. Then there's Terex, this brutal tyrant who, honestly, he seemed to kind of enjoy all the power that came with being a herald. And get this, for a brief time, Dazzler, yes, that Dazzler, the disco queen herself, she was a herald too. Dazzler? You're kidding me. Talk about a wild resume builder. That's insane. Galactus certainly has a diverse HR department. Right. But okay. Let's get back to the to the main event, the cosmic elephant in the room, Galactus himself. We've talked about his origins, his power, his complicated relationships with his heralds. But when it comes down to it, what is he? Is he a straight up villain? Mm -hmm. Just a force of nature, like a hurricane or a volcano? Or is he more like some kind of like cosmic gardener clearing the way for new life? How do we even begin to define a being like that? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And the truth is, he's kind of all of those things all at the same time. He's been depicted as a terrifying force of destruction, an entity that spells doom for entire civilizations. But he's also been shown as a, well, a vital part of the cosmic order. You see, there's a theory that connects him to eternity. Eternity, like with a capital E. The one and only. The embodiment of the universe itself. And the idea is that Galactus's hunger, as destructive as it might seem, actually prevents something even worse, something that could wipe out, well, everything. Whoa. That's a lot of pressure on one being, even one as powerful as Galactus. Have any of the, you know, the good guys ever tried to just, I don't know, take them off the board mm -hmm. permanently? They've certainly tried. But there's this one story. It's incredible, really. It involves Mr. Fantastic, you know, from the Fantastic Four. Yeah. He actually defends Galactus in a cosmic trial. Can you believe that? His whole argument is that the universe needs Galactus, that his existence is essential. Mr. Fantastic, playing cosmic lawyer for the devourer of worlds. Yeah. That's um, that's a bold strategy, even for him. But it makes you think, right? The writers over the years, they've really played with this push and pull between destruction and necessity when it comes to Galactus. Absolutely. They haven't shied away from exploring the complexities. One of the most interesting developments in the comics is his transformation into, get this, 
the life bringer. The life bringer. So instead of consuming planets, he's what, restoring them? That's the gist. Bringing dead worlds back to life. It's a complete 180 from what we expect from the devourer of worlds. So from planet eater to planet healer, that's an interesting career change. What's next? Cosmic therapist. Mm. But it just goes to show, even after billions of years, Galactus is still full of surprises. He's evolving. Exactly. He's not static, not just this one-dimensional, you know, planet-eating machine. There's depth. He's capable of change, which is, honestly, that's what makes him such a compelling character to explore. For sure. It adds so many more layers to a character who could have easily just been the, well, the big bad monster of the week. But let's, yeah. before we get too sidetracked, let's zoom out for a second. Big picture. We covered a lot of ground here. Origin stories, cosmic powers, those heralds, the whole to eat or not to eat dilemma. But for the folks listening out there, why should they care? What's the takeaway? We're just talking about a giant space god with a serious appetite. What's the relevance to you, you know, to us? I think it all comes back to that paradox we keep bumping into, you know, this tension between destruction and creation. Galactus forces us to think about these big questions, the ones we often forget to ask. What makes a civilization valuable? What does it even mean? to exist in a universe this vast and ancient? And can something that looks destructive, like totally devastating, actually be part of a larger, you know, a cycle of creation? It makes you think. Exactly. If you really connect with that, with the bigger picture, it's clear. Galactus represents change on a fundamental level. He's a constant reminder that nothing stays the same. Not really. The universe isn't static. It's always in motion. Life, death, creation, destruction, it's all part of a process, a never-ending cycle. It's pretty humbling when you really think about it. Even entire worlds, they come and go. They're temporary, you know, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, I mean. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But there's also something kind of beautiful about that, don't you think? Yeah. Even in the face of this incredible power, this constant change, this inevitability, mm -hmm. life finds a way. It's resilient beautiful. Absolutely. It makes you appreciate every moment, the interconnectedness of it all. And I think it also makes us consider our own place in this cosmic dance, you know, because if Galactus represents a force that has to exist, even with all the destruction, maybe we as beings who are aware of this cycle, maybe we have a responsibility too to make sure life continues to yeah. protect it. Wow. So it's not enough to just like sit back and watch the cosmic show. We actually have a role to play. It's something to think about, right? It definitely is. And I think yeah. honestly, what we've discussed it's just scratching the surface. There's so much more to explore. So many stories, so many interpretations, all these incredible comics that delve even deeper into these questions, into Galactus. Exactly. And I'd say for anyone listening who wants to dig a little deeper, there are some truly amazing Galactus stories out there. You've got classics like the Galactus Trilogy or the Thanos Imperative, which really digs into this whole idea of cosmic balance. There's a whole universe of cosmic adventures waiting to be discovered to put it better myself. But hey, before we wrap up, I want to leave you all with one final thought. We talked about how Galactus, he's this essential force, right? This counterbalance to creation itself. But here's the question, the big one. What does it say about the universe, about existence itself, that a being like that, that needs to exist in the first place? Is it like a sign of how fragile life really is? Or maybe, just maybe, it's a testament to how vital change truly is, because nothing stays the same forever, not even on a cosmic scale. Now, those are the questions, my friend, the big ones. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, by trying to understand a being like Galactus, we can start to understand ourselves a little better, our place in the universe. I love that. A little cosmic introspection to end on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been wild. Until next time, keep looking up and never be afraid to ask the big questions. All right, so strap yourselves in, because this deep dive is going to be a wild one.